Deepers Creepers is hands down one of the best horror movies ever made. I could be biased because it was one of the first horror movies I had ever seen, but something about it always stood out. Maybe because the main character did not make it out alive, which was tough for me, especially since I had a little bit of a crush on Justin Long at the time. I mean, who didn't, am I right? One of the standout aspects of Jeepers Creepers was its ability to create a sense of dread and unease throughout the entire film. The eerie cinematography coupled with a haunting musical score creates an atmosphere that is both unsettling and captivating. The Creeper is a truly terrifying and memorable character with his grotesque appearance and his haunting eyes. I mean, look at him, my guy is a living nightmare. The way he stalks his victims, taunting them, and let's not forget the iconic Jeepers Creeper song. Chances are, if you haven't seen the movie, you've at least heard the song somewhere. However, I should also mention that the director, Victor Salvo, was straight up garbage. If you don't know the controversy, he was convicted in 1988 for engaging in sexual misconduct with a minor who was working on one of his previous films. It's a little hard to separate the art from the artist, but man do I enjoy every watch of this movie. However, this is not the movie I am here to talk about today. Instead, I'm going to be going over my thoughts and review the latest installment in the franchise, Jeep Creepers Creepers Reborn. And my god is this bad. Bad is an understatement. There are no redeeming qualities at all and it's not even a fun bad. From start to finish, it fails to capture any of the thrill and horror of the first two films. Hell, Jeepers Creepers 3 is a better watch than this garbage. The scariest thing about this movie is the god awful CGI, green screen, whatever it is. And for anyone that had to pay to see this movie, I am so sorry. You know, this is a little different from my usual videos, but if you are into horror movies, um, I would be so grateful if you stuck around. Leave a like and maybe subscribe. Let's get into the video. It starts with an older couple driving through the countryside, paying homage to the first film, I'm guessing. The dialogue is forced and it doesn't feel natural at all. It's like they threw two people into a car and said action. It's just the same intro as the first movie, but worse, and for some reason has not one high-speed chase, but two where the husband almost kills his wife drifting their car to the side of the road. And so you're like, oh, okay, it's just Jeepers Creepers remade. But the stupidest scene ever happens when as they pull out from where they were parked, they watch the creeper in the van get out and change his license. Like, is the license plate going to be the reason this van doesn't get identified? The van could not be any more distinctive. It's an eyesore. But that's where they get ya, and we are introduced to our real main characters, Chase and, uh, Lane. I almost forgot her name because of how much I do not care about her. So Lane and Chase are on their way to a creeper convention because in this movie, they acknowledge the creeper almost as an urban legend. This is also where we get a taste of just how bad this movie is going to be. They somehow have less chemistry than the first couple, and so they're driving through, headed to this horror fest of sorts. And we learn that Chase, her boyfriend, is super into the supernatural, but Lane, on the other hand, is a major bitch who is incapable of fun and literally just spends the whole time dogging on her boyfriend's interests. But I digress. As they're driving, Lane just chugs some medicine out of a bottle and then and jerks the car off to the side of the road like a crackhead and runs into the CGI wilderness of rural Louisiana, not telling her boyfriend what is wrong. And he doesn't even seem to care, which I don't think I would either. He just kind of sits in the car. But this is where we learn two completely dumb plot points in this movie. Chase wants to propose to Lane on this trip and Lane might be knocked up. This is the big moment, by the way. The Creeper's first on-screen introduction, new adaptation, what's he gonna look like? Uh, it's not good. When I first saw this, I was disgusted. I wasn't even scared. He looks like a slimy baby man just crawling out of the dirt. Not intimidating, not scary. I almost feel bad. He looks like something you could get at a store for like a Halloween yard decoration. Back over to Pukey Lane and Chase, she gets a call from her friend who is supposed to be meeting them at the convention or whatever, but he doesn't matter because he dies. In the dumbest way, might I add, he drove down some dead lane back road and instead of just pissing by the side of his car, he just frolics into the woods like a full on hike. And it's so dumb. I don't even feel bad that he dies. Chase and Lane end up stopping at this voodoo woman shop and it's just really awkward. They do make a call back to a prior film with a harpoon and do some shitty foreshadowing when Chase stabs his finger on top of this toy house. They ask the lady for directions and she gives them verbal directions. They could have just easily wrote them down or even typed them out on their phone, but instead they pay fucking $50 for a map. 
Like, what? Also, when Lane reaches for the map, she full-on manhandles the other lady's hands, whose immediate reaction to grabbing something is to go for the middle. Well, this sets up Lane's psychic abilities, and she has a That's So Raven vision, where she sees some stroller in front of a fireplace, because she is pregante. They really want you to know she's pregnant. By the way, the pacing of this movie is terrible. It's like an hour longer than it should be, and at times, it's hard to sit through because nothing is happening. Like, when they finally get to their hotel, they have this cosplay montage where Plain, <clears throat> I mean Lane, is dressed up in all these sexy horror costumes and it goes on for way too long. She goes into the bathroom afterwards to take a pregnancy test where she ends up brain blasting another vision and drops the pregnancy test on the floor when a bird hits the window, shocking her back to reality. It doesn't show her picking up the test either and this kind of bothers me because Chase enters the bathroom and like he had to have seen it, it's just on the floor, but I guess uh, why should I care if the main characters don't even give a shit, right? So they get to the festival and so many things happen at once. A scare actor pretending to be a stab victim ends up dying when he wanders off into the woods, lighting up some of that good, you know what I'm saying? And then we're introduced to like 10 different characters who are all supposed to be important. Redneck, this dude who runs a knife throwing stand. Blondie and a crew who are at the festival for their web show. Voodoo woman is here and her creeper clan that consists of a blonde woman who sounds like she talks with rocks in her mouth and some old dude. Their whole plan is to get Chase and Lane to this abandoned house so the creeper can eat them and have the baby. The plot is very convoluted and they do a terrible job explaining everything, but that's basically the gist of it. So they win this raffle, that was rigged by the way, where the redneck guy will be a tour guide of sorts and take them to the paranormal spots where the film crew will tag along. There is also this rising tension between Lane and Blondie because this girl is throwing herself all over the girl's boyfriend and it's really weird. Everything about this movie is weird though. The creeper watches from a distance as Lane storms off once again into this horrendous green screen cemetery. Like, could they not get a fog machine or something or go out to an actual cemetery? Chase follows after her and while that's happening, the camera crew can't get any service and one dude follows this cloaked person out into the fog. It had me shaking my head like, I don't think I could finish this movie. But I did and I watched it another five times. Why? Because I make shitty life decisions. Well, the creeper comes down and scoops Lane right on up and Chase comes running back to the group like, ah, oh, my girlfriend, fiance, has been kidnapped. The group has its own issues though because they find the massacred body of their cameraman. Everyone starts freaking out. They head on over to this abandoned house they believe Lane might be at. The clan ends up locking them into the house so the creeper can feed. I don't really know what it does because it doesn't eat people or do any of the cool things that it did in the first films. They all get into an argument. The redneck pulls out a gun and fires it into the air. Oh, and if you're wondering where Lane is, she's locked in like the sex dungeon of sorts and when the creeper hears the gunshot, he just leaves her behind with a knife like she's not going to try and escape, which she does a piss poor job at trying to sneak. Like every 10 seconds, this bitch is screaming and crying. Like, come on, you're trying to escape a killer. Don't you want to be a little discreet? Anyway, everybody teams up together and they try to escape, but instead they do a lot of running up and down the stairs. So they get upstairs and this scene kind of made me laugh because the creeper comes bursting through a window and the redneck shoots at him and the creeper like wags his finger like no 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 it's like so sassy then chase tries to 1v1 him blondie goes into the separate room to try and use her phone but she gets no service and i'm mentioning this because it's important for later the creeper finds her and punches his hand through the wall and rips out some of her hair she runs off and he goes into the room and this is when we hear it the knockoff version of Jeepers Creepers and oh my god is it bad. I remember looking it up on YouTube after and listening to it just in awe of how dumb it is. Jeepers baby! I'm gonna try and speed run the rest of the movie before everybody unsubscribes from me. Lane ends up falling through the ceiling and they run back upstairs where Glasses gets hurt by a bear trap. Chase is somehow able to get this decrepit dial-up phone to work and calls 911. The creeper bursts through the door and kills Blondie with an axe and they do another round of tag throughout the house. Lane tells Chase she's pregnant and they devise a plan because she knows that the creeper wants her baby. They decide to send the cripple and redneck back upstairs to lure the creeper down and and the cripple dies, which made me a little sad because I kind of liked him. The creeper goes down and starts smelling Lane's stomach. Redneck and Chase go to the top of the house and push this lightning rod and ten of bullshit off the roof. Lane takes these throwing knives and stabs them through the creeper's eyes, but not before saying, How do you like those peepers, bitch? That was an actual line. 
in this movie. They impale the creeper and it looks like shit, but a giant swarm of birds knocks the redneck off the roof, killing him. The police show up and just look at this bullshit. It is so ugly. They couldn't have just gotten a couple cop cars out at night. The movie ends when Lane gets shoved into a cop car and her eyes turn black. And is the creeper actually gone? Who knows? I do not believe this movie will end up getting a sequel and um, I am not complaining at all. I just sat there after the movie ended feeling a little gross, honestly, disappointed that I could have spent my time doing literally anything and it would have had more meaning. I just couldn't shake it though and I really wanted to talk about this movie. It's also the 23rd year and you know how like the creeper comes out, 23 days to feed. So I kind of just wanted to talk about the movie a bit and I didn't want to talk about the other ones. My opinion on the movie is that it's bad. It had a brand new director named like Timo or Timo from what I was able to find. He hadn't really worked on too many projects or directed much of anything, which leads the question. Was he ready to take on a role of directing something so large? They could have done literally anything and it would have been more entertaining than this. Like if they wanted to do the whole couple pregnancy thing, why didn't they just make it like a found footage? If they wanted to keep it cheap, all they would have had to do is maybe make a really good found footage film where this couple is out in the woods and maybe if they wanted to add the pregnancy plot line, they could have easily done that. But instead, we get an hour and fucking 40 minutes of just bullshit. So yeah, I just, it sucks because I was really looking forward to this new something and we got nothing back and I'm just really disappointed. So if you guys made it this far, I just want to say thank you so much. I know it's not my usual kind of video, um, but yeah, if you liked it, leave a like, uh, subscribe. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you have a great day. Bye!